your host, Jason Park, and behind me I have a 1993 Nissan 300ZX, also known as Project 901. Stick around, because it's tuner time. Okay, so this is your beautiful 300Z behind us, right? What, what have you, okay, tell us how, how did it start? Like what made you wanna buy the Z and then what, what was kind of like the steps and process that got it to this point now? Oh man, you know, that's a, that's a, a bit of a story, but back in probably about 2009, I uh, really wanted to get something else. I was in a uh, Honda Civic and I said, you know, I, I wanna get into an older sports car and my wife's Japanese, so. I said, what can I do to get into a Japanese sports car? And at the time, you know, the, the 350Z and all that was a little bit out of my reach. And so I said, let me go back to the 300s. And, and sure enough, I found a, a clean one. Didn't know a lot about Zs at the time, um, but it was a, a clean in a cloth interior automatic um, car that once I got it, I realized- The one nobody would look oh, at. Oh, it was the one nobody would look <laughs> at, right? And so I've, I've hopefully turned it into something that everyone looks at, but- um, you know, at the time, it was certainly a daily driver. It was practical, but even in its in that form, there's something about the Z and the and the way it feels, the way it drives. It speaks to you. When I first went and drove the car, even in that form, the cockpit of the of the of the car, just the feel. There's just something about a Z, especially in this particular era. Mm -hmm. It just really speaks to you. And so from there, you know, it was one of those. How do I do more with it? Well, I kept going to. To, you know gas stations and this that and the other and people would be telling me hey uh, do you know about z1 motorsports and i would be like no and i finally said i'm gonna go figure out where the z1 motorsports is right and so, right right um and know, what year was this this was around you said 2007 uh yes yeah, around 2009 okay um, around that time and then maybe around that time i was also you know starting to look at um you know fixing the car up and of course i'd go to z1 and have the maintenance was done and see all the really cool builds that they have and right right and man there's such a culture around the z's and i had no idea um so you know from there it started well what do you want to do with the car well i didn't really like an automatic so i switched it to a manual that was one of the first things and even as an na with a manual that car was just so much fun to to drive um, you used to beat on it on the dragon's tail quite a bit and um you know i happened to be at the z1 at some point uh, went for a, a ride with a, with a guy named Alan Z1, really cool guy. He had a really, really nice built car, mm -hmm. um, doing about 600 or so horsepower, mm -hmm. which uh, you know mine's at 655 now. And uh, 655 I, horsepower. 655 to the wheels, probably about <laughs> seven something to the crank. <laughs> right? so, that's geez. that's exotic supercar <laughs> Lamborghini GTR territory. You you literally brought the 90s Z that was like an affordable sports coupe, even though that's a two by two for, for everybody, and you brought it to supercar territory. Yeah, it's a, it's a little further out than I expected that it was going to be too. You know, when I, when I built that car, um, you know, it, it's got a, a forged motor in it, um, and I got behind the wheel. Um, well, actually, I got John at Z1. He's a tuner at Z1. He's mm -hmm. an awesome guy. He can tune anything. Um, he got behind the, the, the wheel of the car, <laughs> You take me for a test drive, and at this point, I'd already upgraded the brakes and done a few things on it. But you were still in the automatic. It was manual at this time, and, okay. and we had we had switched it to a twin turbo. And he got me in this car, and I had never felt that kind of butt dyno power in my life. And it, it just shows you, you know, 
as much as I drive the car and I know how to drive the car, you get someone who knows the limits of these things and can really put it on you. I was just floored with the, the amount of power that it can put down and, yeah. and the stopping. You know, he, he floors it and says, hold on a minute, this is, you know, and we go probably, I don't know, quarter of a mile and he just stops right in front of an intersection and he turns over and deadpans me and he says, Aki Bonos, I trust them. And, uh, you know, just it's the big brakes that are on the car. Yeah. And I mean, from, from that point on, I was just, you know, you're, you're stoked and you're hooked. And, you know, then they came out with um, Twins Design, which is the wide body kit that's on the car now. Which, yeah. which this wide body kit on this car complements this car so good. I, like, I, I wish that people could see it in person yeah. because it, it, it feels like it should have came from the factory this way. It has like that, that GTR Skyline-esque, like, like feel to it. Like you can tell the lineage is there. Like this kit that you have on the car fits the car so perfect. It fits it real well, you know, and it's functional too, right? So if you take a car and you, and you push it out 40 millimeters in the front and 60 in the rear, and you push those tires out to match it, you know, you get a lower stance car, you get one that's wider. It handles so much better. Um, the arrow on the car, you know, complements it very well. Um, so, so yeah, it, it's, um, it, the lines on the car change too, right? Especially for a two plus two. A two plus two, you look at them, they're a little long. You know, a lot of people call them the limo. Mm -hmm. You put a twins design kit on there and it lowers the lines. People still come up to me now and they look at my car and they go, oh my God, that's a two plus two? And you're like, yeah, that, that's a two plus two. But it changes the line so much, you don't even notice it until you get in there. But the upshot is, you know, the two plus two with a little bit, you know, of a better uh, wheelbase, it, it actually tracks better. Right, you know, right. I can, I can get on the car and instead of that rear end trying to go around, it's trying to go straight. Yep. Um, so yep. it's, it's a little more stable, I think. And, um, and one of the things I noticed on, on your car, like the suspension, the, the, the way in how high it sits off the ground is literally perfect. Like you can, you can get on it and drive aggressive, but you can daily it and not bottom out, scrape out. You don't have to worry so much about bumps. Yeah, um, there's a uh, company uh, down in Atlanta, um, I'm trying to think of their name again, um, Gran Turismo East. And they're experts about setting up a, a suspension. I remember they, they actually set me in the car and said, how much do you weigh? I'm not going to disclose that at this point. Right, right. Uh, but <laughs> they, they literally fill up antifreeze bottles, put it in my driver's seat, and then tune the suspension around the car for me sitting in. So the car sits the best, literally, when someone of my size is in the car. Wow. Right, and so it doesn't bottom out to your point. It's not hitting the bump stops. It, uh, it's literally made to... to perform you know, right. it's a performance build i'm glad it sits as low as it does um that wasn't really the reason um for it to be set up like that it was it was the drive that's what the car is all about um and so i'm, I'm happy that the build looks great yeah i'm even happier that it performs and you know, yeah it's uh, it's all about you know it's probably cliche but smiles per gallon yeah and i yep. think that one delivers in spades well let me ask you this what like clearly it's modified but what if off the top like what have you done to the car that you know, not only, you know, that you've made to be your literal piece of art that you take on the road, but like, what are the, some of the modifications that you've done to the car to get it to this point? Oh yeah, so, I mean, everything from a, um, a modified uh, take on a GTR exhaust has gone under the car. You know, I've got Garrett um, 63, 28 turbos or 2863s on there. Um, so very big uh, turbos, they, they're very responsive. They very little lag and such a such a big turbo in the car. Mm -hmm. um, it's got forged internals, like I said, on the on the engine. You know, something that uh, it's it's nice for me to say that it actually has the the Z power plant in the car, right? So it's the VGDETT, right? Which would have came out in the twin turbo variant. Mm -hmm. um, so the car's very well balanced for that reason. And then of course, you know, I went and put leather interior in it, and done all the creature comfort. You know, I've got the uh, Apple CarPlay, all those all those little things where you, know, you sit in the car and you go. This car really is, is more modern than the one I drive every day. Yeah. So I sit in it. Which it, is the G37. It, yeah, it's a G37, <laughs> right? So I drive one of those every day and, yeah. and I sit in the Z and it, it just has more creature comforts. It, it fits you better. It's tight. Um, you know, everything I've done to the car hopefully has been in the, in the right way of improving it from, you know, the, the steering setup to, mm -hmm. you know, SPL parts and all the suspension, all those things that you, you put in them. And then when someone else drives it and you had an opportunity to drive the car, it, it really should drive like it drove off the factory, except, you know, it's a little more souped up one. And that's yeah. because of all of the, you know, the meticulous parts and the pieces that go into to something like that. Mm -hmm. and, you know, you could, you could build one 
a lot cheaper, but you're going to get that kind of result, yep. right? So yep. it, it's a lot of quality over a long period of time. So would you ever, what, okay, so what do you think would be your next step, right? Like, um, this is your, your, your baby, you got your G37 daily. We're not going to talk about your supercharged Honda S2000 today. No, That's not that one. <laughs> but what would be your next step up in car? So like, you know, typically like if someone buys a Civic, right, their next step up would be the SI, then from the SI they may get the Type R. But what would be your step up from the 300Z? Um, well, step up from a 300Z would probably be, um, you know, long-term vision would probably be getting a, a GTR. Uh, certainly would love to have one of those. Um, but I, I really think, you know, with that new Z coming out, um, having a, a, a bolder gray next to a Nardo gray, that, uh, that just seems like the thing to do, right? And so that's, that's probably going to be the trajectory. I'd love to, to own one of those new Zs and have it also another twin turbo, another manual car yeah. next to this twin turbo manual car. Yeah, I think that yeah. would be uh, <laughs> Perfect. really cool, right? So. <laughs> well, you know, they did such a good job with the new Z, right? The, the way they, the, the body lines of the new uh, 350, 370, the tail lights of the 300, the headlights of the old school, what the 240 uh, or the Datsun, like the way they built it with the twin turbo power plant, like it's, it's literally like perfect and the price point is perfect. The power is perfect. Now we just need to see it in real world action to see if the way it feels is just as perfect as it is on paper. Oh yeah, absolutely. I mean, they really had me at the uh, the, the tails. They, they threw it back to the to the 300. I thought that was very much uh, really cool. And then, you know, they came out with a V6 twin turbo. I mean, that's a winning combination. It, it wins for me now and it'll win for the new one. I guarantee it. Yeah, absolutely. Now let me ask you this. What's the, I guess, what's the, the thing that you love the most about your 300Z? And then what's the thing that you hate the most about it? Oh man, um, so love the most, I, I think I love the most that it's, it's, a, it's a full build, it's together. It's, it's got the interior, the exterior, the, the power where you want it. Um, I even got the, uh, the stereo exactly where I want it. It's kind of dialed in for me, right? So those are the, the love things. The, the hate things is, I think I've got the car to the point where I'm not afraid to drive it. I'll drive it, but I'm not going to track it. I'm not going to push it too far because it, it, it has become that that build where, you know, if you want to see a grown man cry, let me get that one on the wall. You'd see it, right? So, so, so it's one of those where I know it would be very hard after this long a time and that long of a build mm -hmm. for me to ever really do it again. Yep. You, know, you, you, you talk to guys, hey, they just built this car. Well, they could just go build that car again because they just built it. But when you build something over such a long period of time, you can't get the parts anymore. Yeah. You can't do it the same way. And would it feel the same? Yeah. If you said, hey, you know, James, go build another two plus two. Well, I could get a chassis, but could you make it feel the way that one feels? I don't know. Maybe you could, but uh, for me, it's it, it's just dialed in the way I want it. Yeah. Sense. Yeah, no, that, no, absolutely. And, and, and in reality, like if you'd spent all this time building it and then you wrecked it, why would you want to go through the hassle of spending another five years or two years building it again? Exactly. Um, so if, if someone was, was looking to buy a 300ZX, what advice would you give them? Wow, um, so if someone's looking to buy a 300ZX, although I do have the 2 plus 2, mm -hmm. I would say go after something that's clean, go after something that's already twin turbos if you're looking for power, right? Um, you know, don't don't get someone else's project for cheap because, you know, realistically, it, it's going to take a lot to put in it. So if you're looking for quality, find something that you already like and then put your own spin on it. Um, mm -hmm. So try to find something that's already in good shape. I, I see a lot of people that'll say, wow, this is a great deal on this, um, you know, rolling chassis or, or whatever, right? And so, yeah, it, it might have been, but how much time and money are you really going to spend? And, and the time is the big thing. If yeah. you want something you're going to enjoy, go buy something you're going to enjoy and then make it your own from there. Yeah. That, that would be my advice. Yeah. Okay. So let me ask you this. If, if you, if someone offered you the ideal price right now, right? for your 300z would you sell no you know i wouldn't i wouldn't <laughs> yeah my my car is uh it's certainly a unicorn she's definitely not for sale um but, you know at any price and that's uh i've had some some interesting offers in the past and things i've had to stop and think about but end of the day um she's crazy she's my she's my therapy car right? yeah so i go out and i take a uh, drive in that car and there is no bad day after that yeah right when i say it smiles per gallon you, know, you can have the worst day in the world pop it in third gear and disappear and uh you're not having a bad day anymore i like that third gear and disappear <laughs> well thank you so much i appreciate it thank you for talking to us about the 300z now let's take it for a quick review Ooh. 
the cockpit of this Z is very nice. Everything is kind of driver neutral. I can see where the later generations in the 350 and the 370 kind of got their interior inspiration from. This particular car feels very tight. Surprisingly easy. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. I was going to say surprisingly easy to drive with 600 plus horsepower. So this is my first time driving a Z. I've driven 350s, 370 Nismos, I've driven Skylines, but this is my first time actually driving the 90s era Z. I know. <laughs> Transmission is super smooth. Now this car used to be an automatic and the owner swapped it for a five speed or six speed manual? Five speed. For a five speed manual. I can tell you, I haven't even gone above 3000 RPM and I can already feel the power within that pedal. I could feel that if I were to press the pedal at any moment, this car would just go. Seating position is really nice. The roof line of this car is really nice. You have clear visibility all the way around. You don't really have any blind spots due to that really large back window. Um, gauge cluster is super simple. You have your, your RPM gauge, your oil pressure, your fuel, your speed, your temperature, pretty much everything you need. You have your super cool, almost 80s inspired buttons for cruise control and to control really the lights. What else do we got here? Uh, you would know better than I. Air conditioning on the, on the uh, right there at your fingertips. So the, uh, the design of the 300ZX allowed for um, easy control right from the cockpit, right from your fingers, everything from climate controls to your heating, um, all the way right at your fingertips uh, from the back. Right. So the car does have some of those glorious 90s rattles that you get from really any car in the 90s. But man, this car feels so tight. It feels so smooth. It feels planted. It feels modern in a way. Like the way that you have this car built, it feels so modern, but nostalgic at the same time. I would say modernly nostalgic. That's how this feels. Uh, the suspension is not super stiff, but it's not soft either. It's kind of like if stiff was a 10 and soft was a one, it's like at 7.9, 8.2, if that makes sense. Um, man. This feels really nice. This feels, it almost feels scary because I'm, I'm almost a little scared to even give it any throttle above that initial, like, just let me get where I'm trying to go to. Okay, so that was just a little bit. That was just a tap on the gas pedal. And I could feel, it almost like an orchestra. I could feel the car just like playing the motor, the exhaust, the, tow, the turbo spool, I could feel it all coming alive just by barely, just barely touching it. But in the POV view, you guys will see the actual owner of the car driving him, and he got on it. So you, you will be able to feel that and see that in those clips. I'm afraid to get on it, so you're not gonna see me really get on it. Uh, do you have any particular quirks or any cool information that you would like to share about the car? I know, I mean, I think the, uh, the Nissan 300Z kind of speaks for itself in this particular variant with the uh, forged internal pushing 655 to the wheels is, uh, is a little more than uh, what it came out with factory, but it uh, shows part of what this potential for these cars can do. There are people making a lot more power. And, uh, but I think this is uh, where it is as far as being able to have that happy medium of drivability, um, Oh, 100%.
hundred percent. I agree with you a hundred percent. This car is, is is fantastic. This is literally, guys, the cleanest. Make sure you guys go check out his Instagram. I have his Instagram linked uh, below, uh, and I actually have it in the video like right now. It's popping up. This is the cleanest 300ZX I've ever seen in my life. I've never, in person, I've never seen one cleaner from the interior to the bodywork to the way it drives mechanically. Everything about this car is super smooth and you can tell that the owner put a lot of effort, took a lot of time and put a lot of care into this build. And this build thus far is one of the cleanest builds I've ever come across in my life. So. Kudos to you, sir. Leo, get the door. Got it. Sometimes you have to become the monster to save the one you love. Your mother's labs came back in. The cancer is spreading fast. She does need surgery. Um, without that payment, tomorrow she's going to be discharged. In two days, we're gonna rob Chino. Come on, Chino! God! Come on, man! I have a family! Don't do this shit, man! I mean, there's gotta be another way. There is no other way, Leo! If we don't rob Chino right now, 